Hi folks, Brian from Embrilliance here. What I want to show you right now is how to create a envelope shape using Stitch Artist. Notice I've created three points which will form the top of an envelope. I'll now form the bottom of the envelope and we'll control right click to close the shape. An envelope always has the top and the bottom because what it does is contain lettering which has a top and a bottom. What I want to do is designate this object as an envelope by naming it envelope. Now if we add lettering, a lettering design will go and search for an envelope object to fit within. So all I have to do now is type what I want and I've got something that might resemble a Home Improvement Store logo. Now right now all we see is the home in normal text. When we click off of it you'll see that it fills the envelope as it's supposed to. The reason for this is that when you have the text selected you might want to make minor adjustments to individual letters for various purposes. That way when the envelope is filled the lettering still has that property you can always go back and make your changes to individual letters as you normally might. Here you can see just some goofing around, but it will give you the idea. Now, if you're going to use this for something like subway art, we can use more than one letter design and, of course, more than one envelope. Let's quickly create a couple of envelope shapes and we'll just use the rectangle tool for that. Now when you draw you'll normally have a line object but we want to declare these as envelopes so we'll name that first one envelope but we need to make the second one different so it is still an envelope but now it is envelope 2. If we add two lettering objects you'll see the first one will automatically go to the envelope the second one will also, until we tell it, no, use the second envelope. It's a pretty straightforward system. I know someone is wondering, why does there have to be a top and a bottom? Well, what if we wanted to select an object and rotate it? That's why. Some of you may have noticed that in addition to having numbers on the envelope we can also have flags. For instance envelope 1 here could have a flag that's dash L. What that'll do is take the letters and bring them in to the left side. Now if I want I can put an override on the letters themselves. So if I disagree with how my envelope is set up I could say no I want these at the center top. And that's the reason you'll see flags on the envelope and on the lettering object. Generally, the envelope is set up for how you would default the text to appear in the envelope. And that's quite all right. Most of the time, you'll have no flags, just the number on the envelope. And on the letters, you'll have full control of whatever you're going to do center bottom, center left, center right, etc. and so forth. Another feature of lettering within an envelope is the ability to position outside of the envelope. For instance, here we have letters and an envelope and it says like it because we like it. And now we're going to say I want to move that. If I move it and deselect, I can have my envelope and have my letters in the shape even though they're not in the same place as the envelope. We all know how everything works great in a demonstration video, but what happens when somebody gives you this shape and they say, oh, use that as an envelope, and you put lettering on it and you get a scrambled mess? That can happen. Well, what's going on? Let's take a look at the shape. If I'm in Stitch Artist, I can look at the shape and see, oh, that starting point is not where it belongs. How do I fix that? Let's select the correct starting point. That would be a better top left point. 
and we can open the shape and close the shape and that resets the starting point to that place. Now the letters is still a little messed up, so let's go ahead and select the text, hit enter. That'll cause it to regenerate. And now we have envelope text. I hope these envelopes make more sense to you now. Thanks for watching. Until next time.